uh, regardless of improved economic performance under conditions of the commodities boom, the long historical trend of deteriorating um, terms of trade for commodity producers indicates the region must break free of the path-dependent development of commodity production. This case is made ever stronger by the increased volatility of commodity prices as a result of the financialization of commodities. Sorry, I should Um, the Prebisch-Singer thesis, which I assume any student of international development studies has <laughs> read the literature about, uh, focused on the long-term decline in export commodity prices vis-a-vis -vis the price of imported or primarily manufactured products. For example, a commodity producer in Latin America, for a commodity producer in Latin America, the purchase of a co constant quantity of imported manufactured products from 1862 to 1999 required a five-fold increase in the quantity of commodity exports. The short-term commodity boom from 2002 to 2002 momentarily suspended the uh, Prebisch um, Singer thesis, particularly for petroleum and mineral exporting nations. But in spite of overcoming the dramatic decline in terms of trade from 1980 to 2002, <coughs> the average terms of trade only return to the levels experienced by the region in the 1960s. This is one issue that's probably going to be uh, debated over the next few days. Um, but uh, there's evidence that the commodity super cycle that started in 2002 is dead. Uh, global commodity prices we're down by 6% in 2012, a marked change from the growth from 2002 to 2012 when prices surged at an average of 9.5% uh, or 150% over the 10-year period. China, the locomotive of the commodities boom, has uh, seen its growth slow down. Um, the primary imports are expected to fall as the Chinese leadership attempts to rebalance the economy from investment-led to consumption-led growth. Um, this consumer-oriented composition of China's import demand will rise from luxury, uh, for luxury foodstuffs, while the overall commodity imports, once sustained by the infrastructure boom, will decline. By June of this year, uh, the Financial Times declared that the super cycle was dead. We'll see about that. <laughs> Um, uh, I did title this section, the financialization, from financialization to the financialization of commodities. As we know, in the late 60s, uh, the global economy entered a, global capitalist economy entered an overproduction crisis with the rise of uh, Japanese and German capital to compete on world markets. And one of the responses of uh, U.S. capital was uh, increasingly invest in uh, speculative, uh, pro for speculative profit rather than uh, actual production. And the role of finance capital became increasingly important. Um, in fact, just on the way here, I was reading The Economist magazine and they had a section on how the corporation itself has been, uh, root, uh, the has been transformed into limited li liability um, um, partnerships in which um, there's no longer any profit or retained earnings by corporations. They go through the limited liability so that uh, all the profits go to the owners. Mm -hmm. And to actually expand and invest, they have to depend on finance capital. So there's no more the, you know, the tradition of the retained earnings being uh, uh, used to expand production. And that's the dominant form right now in the U.S. Um, that all has to do with the fact that uh, finance capital is always looking for new uh, forms of speculative investment. Um, in 2000, uh, U.S. Congress, well, it was a, it uh, was a very interesting uh, passage of this law. We'll leave the details uh, later, but... Um, it was the Commodities Modernization Futures Act, I just said that wrong, Commodities Futures Modernization Act, um, 
basically stripped the government of any role in overseeing commodities trading or actually requiring the commodities traders to report their trades. And that means that uh, there's no way for us to actually know what the role of speculators is on the markets. It's only seen by their, their effects, which is the volatility. Um, so commodities went from a hedge to a speculative investment in Wall Street, artificially driving up demand. In 2000, total commodity assets under control of financial speculators came to just 10 billion. By the end of the third quarter of 2012, the total commodity assets under management of Wall Street banks reached a staggering 40, uh, 439 billion. Now we know if the Chinese growth staggers or if it has its own financial crisis as a housing bubble burst, um, we can expect the speculators to withdraw from these markets and have a, a speculative crisis in, will ensue. So short-term price volatility also has a strong correlation to economic growth. So the commodities producers in Latin America <laughs> have seen their economic performance do very well as commodities prices um, have shot up. No surprise there, but <laughs> there's definitely a strong short-term correlation uh, to commodity prices and economic growth in these, in these countries. Whether the adverse effects of short-term price volatility are a long-term decline in terms of trades, the historical record strongly supports the conclusion that Latin America must move away from path-dependent uh, primary commodity production to achieve development. It may be sunny now for commodity producers in Latin America, but storm clouds are on the horizon. Thank you. <laughs>